Hello everyone, my name is Chris, and in this video, we're talking about transaction fields and global parameters. When we call a smart contract with an application transaction, you may need to access information from other transactions within the same atomic transaction group. Just as a quick reminder, an atomic transfer is an algorithm feature that lets you group multiple transactions and execute them simultaneously. Anyways, when you need information about other transactions in the atomic group, you use the transaction field provided by PyTeal. If you remember the ABI types video, we talked about transaction types that are used to access information about other transactions in the same atomic group. Now those transaction types have these transaction fields as their attributes, and that's how you access other transactions with the ABI transaction types. Also, there are some global parameters that can get you information about the current state of the blockchain. Now there are seven transaction types, and each one of them has this unique transaction fields you can work with. Now, if you go to the PyTool documentation and go to transaction fields and global parameters, you'll see all of the transaction fields available for you for the seven different types of transactions. So if you take a look at some of them, for example, in the common fields part, you can check the transaction sender. For an application call, you can check the application ID. So all these fields are available for you here. And if you come down here, you can see the seven different types of transactions. PyTeal also provides global parameters that give you information about the current state of the blockchain. So if you go to the bottom of this page, you can see all of the global parameters available for you. So if you take a look at them, for example, you can check the minimum transaction fees on the algorithm blockchain. You can check the latest timestamp. You can check the current application ID, who the creator is for the smart contract. All these information are available for you with the global parameters. So this page will have all of the information you'll need to access transactions and global parameters. So it's a good idea to have this documentation opened up while you're coding so that you can quickly see what kind of fields are available for you. Now let's take a look at a simple RSVP application to see how you can use transaction fields and global parameters within your smart contract. Okay, here we have a simple RSVP app that has two methods. A pay method that will check if the account has opted into the smart contract paid one algo and creates a local state. And we have the check paid method, which will check if the account has paid to the smart contract. Okay, just like always, we have a router set up called simple RSVP app. And inside the bear call actions, we are defining what happens during creation, opt-in and closeout, and also for clear state. All right, now let's take a look at the payment method. This pay method takes in one argument called pay, and this pay argument is an abi.payment transaction type. Inside the sequence, we are asserting three things. For the first assertion, we're checking whether the account that's calling the pay method has opted into this smart contract. We can do that by using the app.optedIn method. And as a first argument, we're getting the sender of the transaction by accessing the transaction field txn.sender. And as the second argument, we're going to get the current application ID, and we can do that with the global parameter current application ID. For the second assert, we're checking whether the payment transaction has sent one algo. Now, we're going to access the payment transaction type here and get the amount of the payment with pay.get.amount. And we're going to check if the amount is 1 million because 1 million micro algos is one algo. For the third assert, we're going to access the payment transaction type again and get the receiver of that payment transaction. And we're going to see if the receiver is the current application address, which is a global parameter. Now, if all three of these asserts go through, we're going to create a local state called paid. And for the value, we're going to record true for the account that's sending this transaction. All right, down here for the check paid method, all we're doing here is we're going to read the local state of the sender of the transaction. So here, app.local get txn.sender, again, we're accessing the transaction field, and we're going to get the local state with the key value of paid. I'm going to assign that to paid state variable. And here in the certs, we're going to assert whether this paid state is equal to true. And if that's true, we're going to output the paid state. All right, down here, just like always, we have the code that's going to compile and write out the artifacts into the file system. All right, let's open up the terminal and run this file. There you go, that should have written out the artifacts. And if you go to the folders, you can see that the three files are written out. 
All right, now let's deploy and interact with the RSVP application in that flow. Again, check that you're connected to Sandbox and connect your dev wallet. Go to ABI Studio and import in the ABI. Go to the project folder, go into artifacts, and then import in the contract.json file. Now create the application by clicking on create app, click bear, and this RSVP application only has one local byte. So I'm going to set everything zero except local bytes. For local bytes, I'm going to set it equal to one. Upload your approval program, your clear program, and create it. Now, if you click on this button right here and open up a new window, you will go to the application overview page. Here, you can get the application account address. So I'm going to quickly copy that. And I'm going to go back to the ABI Studio. I'm going to try calling the pay method here. Now, that flow is great in that it automatically detects the payment transaction type and is going to let you send the tr payment transaction here along with calling the pay method in the smart contract. So let's try sending one algo to the smart contract. So I'm going to paste in the address and send one algo and execute. Now that transaction failed. This is because in the smart contract, we are checking whether this account has opted into the smart contract. So if you see the error message here, you can see something about opted in assert. So the assertion that's checking whether this account has opted into the smart contract is failing. So let's go back out and click on this plus button that pops up opt-in to opt into the smart contract. There you go. Now this account is opted into the smart contract. Let's go back to pay, paste in the address again, and send one algo. And there you go. Now the method goes through. And if we execute the check paid method, you can see that it returns true. So this account has successfully RSVP to this event. Today we learned about what transaction fields and global parameters are and how you can use them within your smart contract to access information about transactions and the current state of the algorithm blockchain. That's it for today. Let's move on to the next video.